Hey guys, welcome back to another Logic Pro how to. We're going to look at how to add reverb in Logic Pro, it used to be known as Logic Pro X. Um, just have got a lot of questions about that recently. They dropped the X, the 10, because uh, now the brand is just Logic Pro. So, okay, let's look at this set of acoustic guitars here. Uh, we have an acoustic guitar left and acoustic guitar right. It's just a panned acoustic guitar, so it sounds wider. And let's look at adding reverb on both of these tracks. So we're gonna add it on this track right here. It's the same thing if you wanna add reverb in anything in Logic. We're gonna be using a stock reverb plugin and then I'll go, um, I'll tell you about a paid reverb plugin that's not that expensive that you could get if you're interested. So here's the acoustic guitar dry. So let's add some reverb. Go down here to add a new plugin. This is where the plugins are. Just go to empty cray space here. Go down to reverb. And there are four different reverbs inside Logic that come for free. I'm going to look at the space designer. And I'm gonna open it up in stereo. Now the easiest way to get started with adding reverb is to choose a preset under this dropdown where it says factory default then go to large, medium, small, warped, surround, or HD. These are just different like folders you can think of. So when you're thinking of reverb, think of where you want to put the instrument in. Literally, like what space do you want to hear that instrument in? Do you want it to be like in a big sp space where it's it sounds really big and lush? Or do you want it to sound very intimate and small? For me, with this guitar, I want it to be in a medium space. I don't want it to be too small, but I don't want it to be too large. So then I go into medium. Now I have the choice of a room, a hall, a plate, gated spring, indoor, outdoor, warped. So I'm gonna to go to rooms because I do want that room feel. I don't want a hall feel where a hall is a bit more, actually, I don't know the specifics of a difference in a hall, but I think, I just think of a hall being like a music hall and a room being like more something like what we're in. So I wanna go room and I wanna do, let's try bright and empty. Now, just with choosing that, we can press um, play because we're cycled at the top here to have a listen to what that sounds like. Noticeably different, right? Very wet, which is what you would say if, we, if you had a lot of reverb. So I'm going to bring down the wetness, and I'm also going to bring down, bring up the pre-delay to about 33 milliseconds. Notice when I bring up the wetness meter, it gets sounds more wet, right? Without anything. Pre-delay is when you're, you're telling the reverb plugin when the reverb should sound, which should actually start. Because think of reverb as a completely different instrument in a way. You have the acoustic guitar, but then you have the reverb. So they're two different things, and they're two different sounds. Um, and in a second, I'll show you that they're actually on two different tracks in a way, uh, not in this case. But what you're saying with the pre-delay is I want that reverb track to start 32 milliseconds later now. So it has a bit of a gap between there, which has a, a cool effect. That's all I'm going to play with this. And then you go through each of these. If you want a large space in a large room, you can see these second counts on the side here are how long the reverb is. So that 5.7 seconds is actually, that will last 5.7 seconds when I press play. You see how I pause it and it continues on. It's such a big reverb and that can be really a cool effect sometimes when you want to fill a lot of empty space, but also it can work against you because when you add reverb, you're just adding more sound. Although it sounds really cool, it's it's one of the aspects that can make your mix muddy, where there's just too many things clashing. So although reverb is sounds so cool, use it to taste. Um, always just, maybe if you're just starting out, pull it back um, 
at the beginning. Don't add too much because especially, this isn't only on the acoustic guitar, we're gonna add reverb to the piano. And eventually when I produce this song, I'm gonna add reverb to the synths and the electric guitars. Some, some, some of the elements on the drums too. So you can imagine how much reverb that is on every track where they're gonna start fighting with each other. Um, you can really dive deep into designing reverb where you can EQ the reverb. So if they are fighting, you can take up the low end or the high end of the reverb or any of the mids, any frequency. You can side chain the reverb and stuff like this. But th these are more advanced topics that I'm not gonna get into. But I do wanna mention and touch on bussing reverb which is different than adding reverb on the plug in here. So we can turn that reverb off and we can go to a bus, to a new bus here, bus 21. And at the bottom here, we can call reverb or maybe a, 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 a medium reverb. Well, I'll just say small reverb. Now I'm gonna go and add the space designer again and I'm gonna choose a small reverb Now, when I press play, nothing is gonna happen because if you're familiar with sends, you need to send signal to this plugin here. So I'm clicking and dragging up. So this is just another way to add reverb. Um, it, there's, it's, just, it's just a different way. You can, it, this can be a great and productive way to add reverb because if you're gonna use this reverb again, then it's productive to have it on a bus send because you don't have to add a new plugin all the time. That's just gonna help your computer speed. But also sometimes it's nice to just have it on the plugin, right? So what I would do and how I kind of distinguish those two when I'm producing is if I really want the, uh, to, to, to design a reverb sound and only have it for the acoustic guitar, I might just go ahead and put it on the plugin. But if I want to just maybe put in a little bit of space to add some texture, then I might put it on a send because I know I'm gonna use this reverb over here to go to my electric guitar and then I'll bus it down here to the same small reverb. So you see how fast that was to add reverb to a new track. I just have to add the same send there. So, and now when I add signal, it's gonna get, well, it's gonna be more wet. So with sends too, you can you can really dial in to, to taste the amount of reverb you want. So that's how to add reverb in Logic Pro for beginners. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll see you in the next Logic Pro how-to video.